I've clicked on Physical Global Tropical RVU for January the 23rd, 2024. As is always the case in these videos, the FedEx pressure are mine alone, and when making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look towards your local weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So we've got our same two systems active today. You're looking on your screen at Tropical Low 5, coming towards the coastline of Queensland, and the system will likely intensify some before it makes landfall in a couple of days along the coastline. And we're also going to be talking about Invest 92 West, north of Rodriguez and Mauritius, uh, that has prompted some alerts across, I believe, Mauritius only. But there's a Class 2 warning now for Mauritius. And you can skip ahead to that portion of the video if you want to. I'll leave a timestamp like I have for the past couple of days. Starting off here with 5U, though, you can see where the system is centered now. You can see the center pretty clear where it is. There's not a lot of thunderstorm activity covering that center, but we do see pretty clearly that the center has gotten a bit more organized. And you can see where it is. It's pretty well offshore still of Australia, but over the coming days, this is going to turn towards the southwest and come towards the coastline. And right now we're looking at perhaps along the coastline near Townsville right now for landfall. Of course, there's still a lot of wiggle room for that. There's a cyclone watch for a large portion of the coastline and along that entire cyclone watch area, I could say we could see a landfall of the storm depending on how it tracks over the next day or two. Now this is the zoomed in infrared, uh, or not infrared, this is the visible satellite loop and you can see a bit closer the low level center. It is a bit more well defined and concentrated than yesterday. If you remember yesterday, the center was underneath convection, but we had confirmed by ASCAT, we had a bit of troughiness draped pretty far west away from the system. Now, since then, we've had that trough access sharpen off more, and we've had a more concentrated area of low pressure develop. It is still pretty broad, and you can get the sense of that from this, uh, from just the spin on the visible, and alongside that, you can see it on ASCAT, just how broad the center is. But it's progress, and the system has gotten much closer to being a tropical cyclone. Really, what we'll be watching for now is when does the system get organized convection sustaining over the center, and does the center tighten up a little bit more? It is broad, and you can have a tropical cyclone with a broad center, but usually you do look for a little bit more tightening of the center before classifying a tropical cyclone. Of course, this classification is just for, you know, tropical cyclone standards of what meteorologists have impacts are really going to stay the same the system already has tropical storm force winds and now that it's a close to being a tropical cyclone we're likely going to start seeing some gradual intensification as the system comes towards the coastline of queensland you can see what may have helped the system today get closer to being a tropical cyclone is right now we don't have a lot of strong shear if you remember yesterday if, when i looked at the water vapor loop we had a little bit of westerly shear impacting the system that has since abated and we don't really have too much shear you can see pretty expansive outflow aloft with all this upper level cirrus expanding away from the storm indicating a fairly low shear environment on that end there might be a little bit of northerly shear if you look underneath the cloud layer to the north of the center, which is about here, there is some evidence of cloud elements trying to move north, but these don't appear to be too strong. And you can see that here in the sounding from the GFS. There's those northerly winds in the mid to upper levels, but it's fairly uniform throughout the rest of the troposphere. And this makes for not very much of a strong shear impacting the storm. Now, this is the period where the shear is the lowest for the system. Over the coming days, the shear is going to increase as we get a, a mid-level ridge developing to the east of the system. You can see that here on the 500 millibar plot from the GFS. This is going to bring more northerly flow as the system is tracking towards the southeast. So you've got a little bit of crosswind here, and it's going to cause a little bit of wind shear. And you'll see that as I go through the sounding, uh, that shear starts to pick up. So you can see the storm's tracking towards the coastline because of this flow down closer to the surface. And aloft, we have this northerly flow putting a shear onto the system with a max shear value in moderate values of about 22 knots. And this will likely cause some disruption in the system. If you look in the little thumbnail here, you can see the relative humidity mainly focused to the south and east, or sorry, south and west of the center of the system. We do have some dry air being pushed onto the northern side, likely because of this northerly flow. And this will likely stop the system from rapidly intensifying, but it shouldn't stop it from gradually intensifying. I don't think this year is going to be all too inhibitive, all things considered. 
Now, here's the forecast from the Bureau of Meteorology. You can see their forecast shows what I just uh, laid out there for you. You can see gradual intensification into a Category 3 storm uh, before it comes in uh, the 25th. I need to look at my calendar for that date. That is uh, Thursday. So we're looking at Thursday night local time for timing of landfall but keep in mind impacts are going to arrive well before that you could have impacts starting wednesday night or thursday morning along the coastline and that will likely lead to a lot of heavy heavy rainfall strong winds and could lead to significant storm surge uh from the center south and that's i imagine one reason why we also have a cyclone watch all the way down to st lawrence you can see that since yesterday the cyclone watch has been expanded northward it now extends from st lawrence all the way up to cairns and i wouldn't be surprised if later today we start getting a cyclone warning in place for areas like townsville in the uh, center part of this track forecast here and for those in the path of the center of the storm, make sure you're staying closely tuned to the Veer of Meteorology as they continue to issue advisories on this system. Uh, one more thing, this is a rainfall forecast uh, from the HAFS model. You can see uh, the storm track here denoted by the heavy rainfall. Uh, anything in purples here is generally about 100 millimeters or more, but you can see there is potential within this uh, where, this is, where the center tracks for some heavier rainfall with the darker purples there and even and yellow showing up there that's about 150 to 200 millimeters or more on that forecast and that could potentially cause some flooding issues uh there along the coastline and inland and there might be some potential that the system kind of stalls here inland and that could increase some of the rainfall threat further inland you can see some higher totals showing up there in portions of central queensland and just stay tuned to the beer of meteorology for the latest information on that potential impact all right, we're now going to move to the Indian Ocean as we have Invest 92 West here across the Southwest Indian Ocean. And just to orient yourself a little bit, the system is centered about here. And here's the island of Mauritius and Rodrigues to the south of it. Now, the system right now is developing fairly well. You can see that we have on this infrared loop what appears to be for the view changes. We have a broad area of low pressure on the southeastern side of this convection. Now, it looks like this is the only part of the area of low pressure here, but I do suspect that this is a little bit elongated to the west, uh, mainly because just paying attention to some of the flow back here west of the convection, there is some evidence of southerly winds on the western side of that convection and turning into more southwesterly flow on the northern side. So I wouldn't be surprised if we got an ASCAT pass to see more of an elongated center, sort of like this. And I'll pause it there so it doesn't keep changing the view. But I'd imagine the center's sort of elongated like that, and we sort of have this other lobe of low pressure here on the southeastern front of that lobe. Now, over the coming days, the system will likely continue this gradual strengthening and development, and we are forecasting, or expecting the system, rather, to become a tropical cyclone over the next couple of days. The Mateo France uh, office has started advisories on the system, and you can see that they're forecasting this to be and I'll get the dates on here as well. A tropical cyclone by tomorrow, it looks like on their forecast, tomorrow morning, local time. And you can see by then it's also making a pretty close pass to Mauritius. And here we have some concern for heavy rainfall and strong winds. Now, the good news is here, this is not going to be a very strong storm. It's going to be a moderate tropical storm. Nothing that you haven't dealt with before we're not talking about a very powerful cyclone here like we were talking about uh, with below about a week ago but this system could still cause some significant impacts that includes strong tropical storm force winds storm surge and heavy rainfall and especially wherever the center tracks uh, exactly will be important for the strongest winds and heaviest rainfall if we do get the system tracking maybe a little bit further west of the center line you could get the center coming very close to right over mauritius and that could increase rainfall totals perhaps over 150 millimeters in some areas here and we could also maybe get some stronger wind gusts perhaps up to hurricane force and maybe some higher elevation areas uh, but you can also see just the extent of the wind field and this is important for Rodrigues and la reunion as well if the system does continue this current center track it looks like we might get some winds in la reunion they're not going to get very strong winds but still some winds uh, that may be significant. If it does track a little bit further west, same with Mauritius, 
impact to Mauritius, they may increase for La Reunion. The center is unlikely to come towards La Reunion. The track really favors a turn southeast right as it's coming through this region. So I'd say the likelihood of a center track over La Reunion is pretty low at this point. Uh, but you can also get some outer bands uh, from the system, which could absolutely cause some heavy rainfall, which is not really needed after Bilal came through. Uh, as for Rodrigues, a more westward track would be good for you, but keep in mind this whole red area is the uncertainty range for where the system could track. And if it comes a little bit further east on this forecast, you could get more significant impacts that could include more heavy rainfall and potentially more strong winds. You can see just the extent of the strong winds on the northeastern side, and that could easily come ashore on the island if the system does track a little bit further east. As of now, though, we don't have any alerts in uh, Rodrigues, nor do we have any in La Reunion, but we do have Class 2 cyclone warnings in, in effect for Mauritius. You can see that here on their English bulletin. I'll leave a link to the French bulletin in the description below. Uh, actually, I'll just leave a link to the website so you can go to the French one so you can get the most up-to-date one. But Class 2 uh, in effect, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get these to be upgraded as we get closer to the passage of the storm. And you can see the rainfall forecast here from the GFS uh, showing the most significant rainfall along that track. And let me get a different color here so you can see it better, but along the center track. And like I said, if it does trend a little bit further west, you could get more of this heavy rainfall that could again be in excess of 150 to 200 millimeters over the island of Mauritius. But the good news is here, no rapid intensification expected for the system. It, it'll likely reach its peak intensity after it passes all the islands and goes south. And we're not expecting the system to have any threat to come back north. And once it passes, that'll be it for now. And the good news is for interest in, in Grec further east, that system is also looking to not really come your way, at least in current forecasts. Like I said, though, uh, about a day or two ago, if the system does have an increased chance to come towards your area, being in Grec is what I'm talking about now. I'll make videos on that. But as of right now, after the system passes, it looks like we'll get a break from tropical activity across these three islands, which I'm sure will be very much appreciated after Bilal and now this storm. Uh, but that's all that I've got for now. I will leave you with the visible satellite loop of uh, our invest in the Coral Sea. Once again, this system is developing and almost a tropical cyclone, and cyclone watches are in place from St. Lawrence up to Cairns. And make sure you have your cyclone prints kit ready. Uh, like I said, I'll leave links to the Bureau of Meteorology and Mateo France and the Mauritius Meteorological Services in the description below, so you can click on those and skip ahead. And make sure you're prepared and stay safe ahead of these storms. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching.